Because we're going to talk about uh, right now. We've got Betty Barr and Rachel Peeker with us to talk about the Dark Skies A Ride. Uh, how are you all doing? Welcome. Great. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. So uh, let's before we talk about the the Hay Ride itself, which is April third at seven thirty um, this Wednesday. Let's talk about um, just the the Dark Skies sort of program and initiative and sort of what inspired it, whichever, whichever one of you guys want to want to take it first. Okay, well, we are uh, part of the Frankfurt Audubon Society, and we are a subcommittee. We are part of an international movement to uh, try to limit light pollution, which is one of the um, pollution types that people don't often think about when you think about the human impacts on the environment. And it's also one of the easiest types of pollution to control, simply by turning out lights. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you think about, you know, I, I can remember like driving into Buffalo in the middle of the night and just this glow of, you know, it's like, and you can't see any stars whatsoever, right? They just, you've got this, and the larger the city, the more. Absolutely. So obviously here, you're not talking about that, but even just one street light affects the way, you know, you, you, you perceive the sky and everything. So I right. guess you all talk about that. Uh, the majority of light pollution does come from street lights. So astronauts, um, that are above the earth looking down can see so much glow mainly because of lit illuminated highways mm-hmm. and cities that are lit up by nothing more than street lights. Um, but you know, other buildings and residential areas certainly have a, a contribution to that mm-hmm. as well. And I believe Anna Marie Rosen came to uh, a recent fiscal court and city commission meeting and yes. spoke in public comments. But she had a, a graphic that you, folks can find on the internet that kind of showed what those street lights are doing. Some of the ones that are out there just pointing like almost directly into the sky instead of, you know, more down that can, uh, you know, which would be better about with pollution. And, right. Yeah. Um, also, certain types of wavelengths have a bigger impact. We know that. The um, LED lights, while they uh, are cheaper and don't use as much energy, they put out a different type of wavelength, Mm -hmm. which is much brighter. Mm -hmm. And it is also um, of a type of wavelength that birds and insects are uh, confused by. So birds, bats, bees um, are out at night, a lot of them are nocturnal, and especially during this week, this is a point where we're starting to see higher levels of migration, and birds that use nighttime skies for migration are confused in thinking that those lights are Mm. the moon. And, you know, the moon is um, 249,000 miles away, but (laughs) when they see a street light that's, you know, 10 feet above the ground, they're confused by that. Mm. So... Um, we're hoping to encourage people to turn out your lights between 11 p.m. and 6 a.m., um, especially this week, because this is part of International Dark Sky Week. Okay. Yeah. Um, Betty, do you want to talk about International Dark Well, Dark I Sky wanted week? to add that last yeah. night, 147,000 birds flew over Franklin County. Wow. Yes. There, there's a, you can go on the Internet. There's a program, BirdCast. Okay. And it will tell you, type in Franklin County, yeah. Kentucky, and it will tell you how many birds migrated. I was on at 6.30 this morning, and there were 900 birds over Franklin County at 6.30. But the peak was 147,000. That's amazing. That and it's that just data. starting. Migration is only mm-hmm. beginning. It's mid-April to mid-May. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so anything we can do to, to, to try to help help those birds migrate. Uh, well, Betty, uh, tell, tell us a little bit about how you got maybe involved in the, the Dark Skies um, sort of program. Are, and are you with the Frankfurt Audubon Society? Yes. Okay, uh-huh. okay. Yeah. Being outside all my life. Yeah. I was kicked outside by my mother. <laughs> Go outside and play and don't come in till I call you. <laughs> uh, I grew up in Frankfurt during the 1950s. And we were always outside. And then I camped a lot. And I lived in Colorado 40 years, so I got to camp a lot at 12,000 feet. Wow. And the night sky in that environment, and I've been to a number of dark sky places. Don't forget Mammoth Cave here in Kentucky. We're unusual because almost all the dark sky places, designated places, are out west. Mm-hmm. But Kentucky has Mammoth Cave, and we're one of the few in this side of the country. Hmm. Wow. But 
being outside at night at a dark sky location and looking up is overwhelming. Whether it's a full moon or no moon, the night sky is something that everybody should see because if you see it, it makes us look so small and so insignificant, and it's a good way to lose yourself. Mm -hmm. If you've got worries or you're troubled about something, go outside and look up, and you realize how small we are. So that's how I got started. So meaning Mammoth Cave on this side of the country is is a spot that's got very low light pollution? And it's, it's one of the designated dark sky places <laughs> in the United States. The national parks yeah. have an initiative. For, okay. for dark skies. So within, the, because it's a large park, and, and so they're able to, I see. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I went to, to California a few years ago, and, and we stayed on, a, on an avocado farm. And, and when we got out of the car, I wasn't thinking about it at all, but I looked up, and I can't, I can't remember the last time I had seen the Milky Way to actually see. Oh, yeah. like, and it just it blew my mind, because I've been, you know, when, I've been in tiny towns in Kentucky, and but it was like it was I mean just mind blowing the difference. And I was like, I haven't seen that and I don't know, like maybe once in my life before that, but yeah, it is. It's just a huge difference. Yeah. So let's um, let's talk about the Dark Sky Hate Ride. That's coming yes. up on Wednesday night at uh, seven thirty. Um, and it's a free event, right? Yes. Anytime between seven thirty and nine thirty. Um, we know that the weather right now does not look good. So dress warm. We as volunteers will be out there for a couple of hours, but Anna Marie Rosen has um, spearheaded the effort with uh, Parks and Recreation for a free event in Frankfurt, and it is a hayride starting at the base of Fort Hill at the Salvation Army parking lot. Um, We'll ride hayrides, and there are five designated stops where we'll hear and see a little bit about... um, the impacts of turning off your lights at night and and just all the benefits of having a a dark sky um, beautiful photography and uh, telescope hopefully the weather will be able Mm -hmm. to see some stars Mm -hmm. Um, if not it will be you know it might be a rain out event but we'll be there hopefully um, have have a break in the clouds that night yeah so, so, so if it does get canceled or something, it should folks be on Facebook or, or maybe just, um, to, just to double check or probably probably just... Yes, you know. the Frankfurt Audubon uh, Facebook page is where we post events. Okay. So that will be our main information for folks. Okay. Yeah. Uh, gotcha. Check that. Hopefully... Yeah, well, let's cross our fingers. Yeah. Uh, Betty, I didn't mean to cut you off. What were you going to say? Oh, I was going to say there's going to be a screech owl there, too. Oh, no Ooh. way, on the hayride. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, Fort Hill has no lighting at night, yeah. so it's a nice place to see the night right. sky. Yeah. And you mentioned the, um, the ability to see the Milky Way. I'm a mm-hmm. school teacher, and I teach Earth sixth grade, Earth, which is mainly Earth science, at Elkhorn Middle School. And we know that students are studying the Milky Way, but they've never seen it. Right, yeah. And so there's an opportunity to help make Frankfurt a recognized dark sky city eventually. We're just in the uh, beginning stages of that. We know that uh, students who experience a dark sky have a bigger, a deeper connection to nature mm-hmm. and to science. And so we hope to inspire students by teaching and showing them what the Milky Way actually looks like. I, I have seen it, but it, you know, it's been many years, and we typically cannot see the Milky Way in in Frankfurt or no, you know, no. anyway anywhere outside of Frankfurt. Um, you get ten miles away, it's possible to see the Milky Way. But you know, that's really part of our dark sky heritage um, is being able to study the stars and the sky the skies. Mm-hmm. And it really gives you. I mean, especially if um, if young students can get that experience, you know, in the same way that Betty did uh, out in Colorado, to be able to see, get that perspective, and get to see the, the beautiful night sky in that way, and how much it can impact impact somebody as they as they grow up. So, really cool initiative. Yeah, happy to have you all here. Thank you. Thank did you. Uh, I'm sure? I think you all look like pranksters. Have you ever just really <laughs> gotten anybody on April Fool's Day? Well, we were prepared to come and talk about. Um, our activity um, with tractors, but we decided that <laughs> we would <laughs> continue with the dark that? skies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that we will have tractors instead. pulling the hay wagons. So okay, yeah, um, so yeah, not far off. <laughs> 
Uh, thank you all for coming in very much. Um, and yeah, hoping for great weather for you all, and it'll be a, it'll be a great night that everybody can get out and, and look at the stars. Thank you very much.